And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Funny! Yes, I've been watching too many black metal documentaries. Blackmail? Black metal. Black metal, okay. I thought he was watching too many documentaries about black males. It's like, that's racist. Black metal documentaries. Why did you just, why are you bringing this up? What? Oh, I thought you said black male, like I'm going to blackmail. That, yeah, I thought that too. Why have you watched too many black male documentaries? Black male? Black metal. Black metal. Black metal. I, I don't, I, I don't know why. I, I'm not very musical, but I find musical documentaries fascinating. Yeah. I don't know what the hell okay. that's up. So, so yeah, they've been they've, they've been quite a few. I have the new uh, David Bowie documentary. I say new; it's from last year. Uh, Moon Age Daydream. I've had it on my computer. Never, never seen it. it, it haven't gotten around to it. I love David Bowie, but I just I haven't. Yeah. No, no. According to Uberfax, Jim Carrey got seven million dollars for Dumb and Dumber, and then Jeff Daniels got fifty thousand. According to Uberfax, thank you for that, Shane P. Granger. <laughs> that is that is that is effed up. Jeff it's, Daniels, that, he deserves more. Jeff Daniels deserves more, and also, uh, it's dumb and dumber. It's not oh dumb God. and friend, right? It's not dumb and his sidekick dumber. Yeah. I also saw David Bowie live. So, Bonnie! Yes. If you're like me, you're no doubt a big fan of this podcast, The Pope on Film. I mean, who is it nowadays? It's uh it's sweeping the nation. It's mopping the nation. It's the ionic breeze quadra of bizarre movie podcasts, but only the real fans. The true fans who have been with us since the beginning, since uh, when we first started out, who have watched every episode, who participates in the fantasy leagues at home, uh, only they would know the two facts about us, the two undeniably really real and in no way made up on the spot facts about America's hottest will they or won't they couple, the next Sam and Diane, uh, Bunny and Mei Lin. First yes. and foremost, Bunny, is the fact that when you are not doing the podcast, you are, in fact, a celebrated food critic. Critic. So tell us, Bunny, what restaurants are you reviewing? What do you like, dislike, etc.? Why don't you open the door of the window of your mind? Well, you know, you really have to dive deep and look in all the nooks and crevices uh, to find really good food out there. And yeah. and Harry's Harry's Barbecue and, and Tattoo Parlor, excellent fries. Excellent fries, nice. some of the best fries you will ever have in your life. Don't mind the roaches. If you don't bother them, they won't bother you. And they are free. You know, so there's really no complaint coming in there. Some people have, have bowls of peanuts. Harry's has cockroaches. You know, it's part yeah. of the ambiance of the whole thing. Yes. Um, nice. There's, there is also, um, Dino's House of All Things Slimy. Nice. Uh, they, they specialize in undercooked egg whites. Undercooked egg whites. Yes. Uh, that would be a great, that would be a great slur for white people. <laughs> Undercooked egg whites. <laughs> Undercooked egg whites are, as most people know them, Mormons. <laughs> White people. I like that. Undercooked egg whites. That was originally going to be the name of the bare naked ladies. Undercooked egg whites. Well, it's been. 
If you want to find a if you want to find a Gen X person in a crowd, just walk into the crowd and go, "It's Ben," and then see who finishes. Yes, that's how you do it. It's 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 kind of the same way that uh, people would get Cartman to sing, uh, "Come Sail Away." You start the song and then Cartman has to finish it. Yes, I can't believe South Park is still a. Th- Thing. I can't believe Beavis and Butthead have come back. I can't believe that um, Howard Stern is considered like a news source. Yes, how the I fuck can't did believe, that happen? I can't believe that, that there are millions of Joe Rogan fans out there and people aren't going, wait, you're obsessed with the janitor from news radio? That's weird. <laughs> That's weird. Is that where he's from originally? Yeah, I first saw him. I first saw him as the dumb janitor from news radio. And then after that, he was the host of Fear Factor. And now he's like the leader of a bunch of um, like a angry cishet white men. Go figure. Uh, I wouldn't call him quite a leader. Joe Rogan is just really, really stupid. That's yeah. Joe Rogan's story. He's just really fucking dumb. Joe As Rogan. As opposed to a lot of other people who are doing things more to be vindictive and mean and paint a false narrative. Okay. Hear me out here. Hear me out here. Joe Rogan is Alex Jones for people who do shots. No, I see. I got to disagree with that because again, ah, I thought that was good. Joe, that was Joe really good. Rogan, Alex Jones is mean. Alex Jones is mean and vindictive and is an evil motherfucker. Joe Rogan is stupid. If you tell him something, he just, he's just going to believe it and regurgitate yeah. it. Yeah, you know, but at the same time, that stupidity plays plays both ways. Okay, you know? I got gotcha. you. He did manage yeah. to check Matt Walsh live on air. That you was know? funny. I'm, you that know, was so funny. like, it's a different vibe. I mean, we shouldn't have stupid people having audiences of millions and millions of people. Yeah. When we're delivering gold, that's like right. Twice a month. That's right. This is the podcast to be in. Um, so that's the first fact. The second fact, which is about me, is that I'm a lover of history. I love it, but I'm also a storyteller. So this is the part of the podcast where I get a story from the history books, maybe one that people don't know very well, and reword it via my own unique storytelling style. And that's what this is: another educationally uneducational installment of. Historic approximations, or as we call it, ah! and to be clear, for all of you uh, doing the Pope on Film Fantasy Leagues at home and online, that's spelled capital H, capital H, capital A, small p, small p, and the small p is essential. It's vital to the uh, ebb and flow of the whole podcast. In fact, I wanted to call it ha, historic approximations, but Bunny said no, mail in. I need P. Yes. Get me that P. I love myself some P. We've got to go back to P. Yeah, and so now it's HAP. Previously, it was called SHAP for a number of years. That was Steve's historic approximations. However, a dead name is a dead name, and so we're moving on. So, what is happening (laughs) with HAP this week? Well, this one is a little different. Originally, my my plan was I want to make this a very personal episode of the Pope on Film because I just had my birthday. I turned older than you'd think. So this is going to be a different sort of a, a very personal about me. But instead, I said, how about we just make it fun and easy? So. Um, uh, so I- instead, what we're going to do is I've made a game. We have had 46 presidents in America, and uh, there's something that I I think that our listeners 
may not know about Bunny and I is the fact that we are both uh, political historians. Yes. Yes. Bunny has his doctorate in U.S. history. I have my doctorate in uh, overwater basket weaving. That's when you weave baskets, but you're walking on water while you do it. It's a Christian thing. Well, let's not forget all of your work in the Teapot Dome scandal. Of course. When you're talking about the Teapot Dome scandal, of course, you got to be talking about Albert B. Fall, the Secretary of the Interior during the Harding administration, who was responsible for the infamous Teapot Dome scandal, which was the worst scandal in political history until every other Republican that came after him. So what we're going to do is I have got a picture of every president. Uh, Bunny has it all locked and loaded. We're going to go through each president, and Bunny and I will be taking a small bit of time for each president, telling you, the viewers, some fun facts about these presidents that you may not know. So using our uh, historical knowledge, Bunny and I, as a United States historians, presidential historians, we're going to be letting you people know some uh, incredible facts that 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 the common people just don't know about so are you ready buddy i am ready i am over ready okay so put up the first president this is uh oh it looked really good for a second right between us go ahead and put it up this is uh george boom boom washington yes that was his nickname boom boom he was actually the first sweat hog. He was the first sweat hog. Yes, he was. Yeah. Uh, uh, here's a fun fact that people don't know about George Washington. People all the time, I think it's a bit overused, but people say, oh, wooden teeth, wooden teeth. George Washington had wooden teeth. He also had brass testicles and a, uh, a copper asshole. Yes. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. It's fascinating. I'm pretty in sure the ruffle fact, on his chest also fact, deflected bullets. In fact, so, in times of stress, a little propeller would come out of that, that copper asshole, and he would fly away. Yeah, not too many people know that about George Washington. Like, if he was panicked, no. he could be like, Go go Washington jet skis, and then jet skis would appear from his 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 from his, his full accurate name is George Gadget Washington. Yeah, George Gadget Washington is yeah. fascinating. Okay, let's move on to the second one, John Adams. Fascinating thing about John Adams is that you see the hair, you see the big hair on the side of his head. Yes. Uh, that's not hair. Those are wings. At I, night in D.C., he would flap his hair wings, and he'd just be flying all over the sky. See, John Adams. See, that I heard different, okay? Because okay. I had heard that was, that was definitely his hair, and it continued growing throughout his life until he became Cousin It. The crazy thing is, here's another president with a bunch of frills on his shirt. Don't go to Florida. They'll execute you. If George Washington literally walked into Miami Beach, Florida, they would think he's a drag queen and shoot him on sight. Yes, this is true. With the powdery face and the, like, wig. Man, our first two presidents would be killed. Fascinating. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to number three, Thomas Jefferson. I know so much about Thomas Jefferson because I recently saw a play about Thomas Jefferson. Well, it wasn't it wasn't about Thomas Jefferson, but Thomas Jefferson was in the play. Anyway, yeah. I know a lot of facts from this play about Thomas Jefferson. Number one, he was black. Number two, he was a great rapper. Yeah. And number three, I'm not sure if you know this, but when they would have cabinet meetings, they were actually just rap battles. Yeah. That, that's incredible. You know, that, that Thomas Jefferson could just... He, he was rapping for America. 
Yes, he he was also he was also a very avid hamster hunter. A- avid hamster hunter. Avid hamster avid. hunter. If you would go to a tour on Monticello, you would see the trophy room of all the little hamster heads up on little plaques all over the room. All over the room. Just I heard uh I heard that Bad Bunny is going to be headlining Monticello this year, which is going to be a big deal. Yeah, I love the Monticello Music Festival. I go every year, take some Molly, mm-hmm. and just uh, you know, just party out in the desert. Let's move on to number four, James Madison. This one looks like our first fancy boy president. He, yeah, he, he, I, I'm I'm not exactly sure why he looks anemic. It yeah. looks like if you just pricked him lightly, he would pass out. And this is the one that is definitely giving off the Christopher Lee vibes. See, okay, I because I thought that one of the presidents gave off Christopher Lee vibes, but it was a different one. That's fascinating. Okay, yeah. uh, fun fact about James Madison. He was a president, and uh, he was a Democratic-Republican, and he His... had a wife... His Dolly Madison. She invented. Yeah. She invented cupcakes and Snoopy. Mm-hmm. And then James Madison and Dolly Madison had a daughter. Her name was Ashley Madison. She slept with every person in Philadelphia. They made a website about her. Please. Oh yes, here they are. James Madison. He does give off Christopher Lee. He does yeah. give off Chris. He 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 looks like he'd put you in a giant wicker man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But 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 we're, but Lily Sobieski's nowhere to be seen. Even in this picture, he looks like he's trying to take over his your mind. Like he's Very trying much to so. get in there. Yeah. James Madison was our first scanners president. Yes. Yeah. So let's move on to number five, James Monroe. He was president uh, from 1817 to 1825. Fun fact about James Monroe. He was not killed. He actually disappeared because one day coming home from a speech, he crossed a bridge uh, that was in a sleepy hollow and he disappeared. All they found was his hat. Some say the headless horseman got him. Yeah. Doesn't he give off headless horseman vibes? Look at him. Yes, he is also uh, later, later, much later, one of his descendants would become Bob the Goon. Very much so. Definitely Bob the Goon. Bob the Goon. Love that. I'm a big Bob the Goon stan. Let's move on to number six, John Quincy Adams. The TV show Quincy is based on his life. Not a lot of people know that. Also, you just look at that photograph. Just look at that photograph. He was our first evil supervillain president. Yes. That he is became how... president after poisoning the water supply in Gotham. <laughs> Eventually, he would nearly freeze to death, so he would have to, he made a giant helmet, and he would just go around making speeches and then freezing everyone. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. He didn't get much presidenting done, but he did create the first freeze ray. Yes. Those eyebrows, fascinating. Okay, let's move on to number seven, Andrew ja- Andrew Action Jackson. Action Jackson. Action Jackson. He was our first Wraith president. Yeah. Because you look at that picture. You cannot tell me that this person is living. No. It, Not it's... at all. Where did you where did you get your weirdo cape? Somewhere yeah. Dracula's going through his closet going, damn it, where did I put that? The only president <laughs> to actually be 
painted out of focus. Yeah. Yeah. He looks so sad. I want to give Andrew Jackson a hug. He looks like he's seen some things, you know? He's seen some things. He he has the look when your parents say, look, uh, I'm not angry at you. I'm just disappointed. That's the look. That is the look. Yeah. My dad walks into my room and sees me wearing women's clothes. This is the face he makes. Yeah. <laughs> right there. I feel this painting. I don't want to give Andrew Jackson a hug anymore. He's a bigot. <laughs> uh, let's let's move on to number eight, Martin Van Buren. Well, I don't, th um, I don't think we're going to find any of these presidents who is not a bigot one way or the other. Good point. Good point. Uh, yeah, like uh, Barack Obama wasn't a bigot, but you know who was a bigot? All the drones he sent to kill innocent people. So we are all... Well, he, he, was, he was very like... Yeah, women can wait for their abortion rights. They yeah, can, they can just yeah. hold on. Do we have more important things to do? There's no rush. There's no rush. Number eight is Martin Van Buren. He is the president who looks the most like someone who would be uh, drinking at Hogsmeade. All of a sudden, I'm in the mood for oatmeal. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, now, uh, a lot of people assume that Martin Van Buren is uh, where the street in Phoenix Van Buren got his name from. No, it's actually the reverse. Martin Van Buren's parent and parents were psychic. And so his parents said, what should we name this child? I think Martin is a good name. But how about this? How about we don't give him our uh, sir, uh, our our last name, Smith? How about we give him the name of what will eventually become a street in Phoenix where all the prostitutes work? So that's why he's called Martin Van Buren. Uh -huh. Fascinating. He was named after a street where prostitutes hang out. Oh, Martin Van Buren. And not the other way around. Okay, nope, good. Nope, not the other way around. Yeah. Mm. So uh, let's move on to number nine. I am sorry, Bunny. William Henry Harrison. He died in 30 days. I swear to you, this man starred in Blood of the Revenge of Vengeance of Dracula. Yeah. A Hammer yeah. production. That face right there. Look, And secondly, look at that nose. That is legit polystyrene. You can collect collect it at the reception. Now, please go away. <laughs> look at that nose. And look at that peak. Look at that widow's peak he has. Somewhere Dracula's daughter is bald. He's what got made that him... he's got that arrow. He might be a, he might be an avatar. Yeah. He might be he might he might be the chosen one. He might be the reincarnation of Ang or Ong, depending on how big of a fan of M Night Shyamalan you are. Mavis, thank you. Mavis is the name of Dracula's daughter. From uh, he looks like a specific British actor that I cannot pin down. Yeah, and I've been trying to figure it out, but I can't think of what his name is. But he looks like a British character actor who who pretended to be drunk in a lot of things. Yes, he might have been drunk in the movie Yellow Beard, but I'm not sure. But he looks like a British character actor. What made him go with the comb forward? I don't know. Maybe that was a thing back then. But that is a huge snoz. Why do people not talk about William Henry Harrison's huge freaking honker? That is insane. Like, like if there was a missing person... You would get the like the missing person shirt, give it to William Henry Harrison to sniff. Next thing you know, he's <laughs> on all fours. He's leading it to the body. Yeah. That is a fascinating note. Let's move on to number 10. John Tyler. Um, Steven Tyler's great grandfather. 
They share uh they both share a flair for fashion. Check out that super extra bow tie. Yes. Jeez Louise. They, the fun thing about his bow tie, he, if someone was giving him sass, he would undo the bow tie and start whipping it around like Indiana Jones. If Dr. Seuss were to draw a president, it'd be this guy. <laughs> That's really good. That's really good. Number 11, James K. Polk. Now, you might be wondering about the thing over his neck. Um, he actually wore that for his entire life until the day that he died. Right before he died, his his wife said, James, darling, is there anything I can do for you? And James said, yes, you can finally remove the thing from my neck. And when she removed the thing, his head just fell right off. Hmm. It, it it's fascinating. They wrote a they wrote a, a kid's story about it later on. Oh, nice! But that that ribbon was keeping his head up. Zachary Taylor. That's number twelve. Let's move on to number twelve. Zachary Taylor. Um. Uh, huh. Okay. So this is this is uh, Zachary Taylor. First off, um, I'm loving. Uh, what's his name? What's his name? The old guy from um, who was dating Squeaky from Once Upon a Time. Dot dot oh, dot. Oh yeah, Bru yeah. Dern. Dern. Bruce Stern. Bruce Stern. Yeah, I love Bruce Stern in his new role. It's fascinating. Number two. The thing I love about Zachary Taylor is he was actually a Civil War reenactor before That's the what Civil I was War. Thinking. He was the first pre-Civil <coughs> War reenactor. He he looks like a Civil War reenactment got out of hand. Yeah, except this was pre-Civil War, so it's really fascinating. <coughs> but uh, credit to Bruce Dern, he's amazing. We're just and not seeing where he's holding up the little plaque with the numbers on it. Yeah. And we're yeah. not seeing the profile. My darling Dolores, the war drags <laughs> ever onward. Yeah, I can absolutely see that. I am. I have been waiting to get to number three, Millard Fillmore. This is the first and only time that any American has ever said, I have been looking forward to Millard Fillmore. <laughs> that, that sentence has never been said before. You'll get a plaque if you search that on Google. And Google will be like, wow, no one has ever searched this. <laughs> but the thing I love about Millard Fillmore, take a look at his face. Millard Fillmore is what happens when Alec Baldwin has a peanut allergy. Yes. Yes. That is incredible. <laughs> that is that is him. Man, Alec Baldwin really let himself go ever since the rust shooting. This is this is <laughs> Benny Hill if he kept his hands to himself. Oh my god, yes. Yes. If they made a serious version of uh, of the Benny Hill music, yeah. I was gonna, I was, I was about to start humming the Benny Hill music, but my head could only remember the Casino Royale music. Oh, and uh, and Woody Allen is hiccuping. I don't remember the Benny Hill music, but. <laughs> I might be the only person who's like, oh, I can only remember the 1960s Casino Royale. I don't even think Woody Allen remembers the 1960s Casino Royale. Um, number 14, Franklin Pierce. He was actually the founder of Pierce Hawthorne Wipes, which is, which is incredible, fascinating. It, I don't know about you, but this is the vibe that I'm getting. Franklin Pierce was our first Ten minute warning. folk singer president. Yeah. You know, doesn't he look like he's at a coffee <coughs> shop somewhere? Uh, he's at a coffee shop somewhere picking on Walter Paisley. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I could see screw it. Franklin Pierce. Number 15, James Buchanan. I I gave I gave up cussing for Lent. <coughs> I've never given up anything for Lent. I've never taken Lent seriously, but this time I said I'm going to give up something for Lent. I gave up cussing and it's been freaking difficult. But I'm just going to come out and say it. James Buchanan looks batshit crazy. Yeah. Absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. He reminds me of that story about a uh, like, hey, we're making the first encyclopedia, the first dictionary, and this this person just writes like three million uh, definitions, and it's like, oh wow, thank you so much. You you've helped us so much. Why don't you come and visit us, or I'll come visit you? And turns out that the person who made all these definitions was in an insane asylum. That's James Buchanan. Yes. This man is insane. He this looks is like someone. He... He's the one who sold the Fiji mermaid. He, he, yeah, he he looks like he's definitely peed on a public bus. <laughs> he's the person where if you're in the subway and he walks in, he probably has like a dead squirrel in his hand and you're like, okay, I'm going to move cars. Number 16, Abraham Lincoln. Why is this man so fuggo? Why is this man so ratchet ass? Look at this man. He is hideous. Yes. He is so freaking ugly. This man. I love Abraham Lincoln. I love him. He was our first vampire hunter president. But Jesus Christ, that face. Wow! He was our first paper bag president. Yes, he was. He wore a paper bag over his face. No wonder he was wearing a stovepipe stove pipe hat. He was peacocking. <laughs> to make people not see his hideous face. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. This man! Ugh. I, ugh. This grosses me out. This man grosses me out. He also has my grandfather's ears. Oh, like cauliflower ears. He has cauliflower ears. Yeah. That is a hideous sight to see. Number 17, Andrew Johnson. <laughs> okay. Andrew Johnson is the first person to say, look, I don't care how old you are. Your Frisbee fell in my yard. It's mine now. Yes. He was yes. the first person to ever say that. Fascinating. He was a pioneer. He was a pioneer. Number and 18. This, and Chris this face right now, when this picture was taken, was when he was attending his first drag show. <laughs> uh, he, he, Andrew Johnson is... The definition of resting bitch face. Yes. He reminds me he reminds me of black dynamite. Like the portrait artist is, is like, Mr. President, why don't you smile? And he goes, I am smiling. That's his smile. Whatever's it, going it, on at the time this picture was taken, he did not approve. <laughs> Who can turn the world on with his smile? Andrew Johnson, he's gonna make it after all. Do, 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 do. Uh, this is fun. Number 18, Ulysses Grant. If you told me that this was Chris Pratt's grandfather, I would believe you. Yeah. Yeah, I could go with that. 100, but not now, Chris Pratt. Not action movie superhero Chris Pratt. Fat Parks and Rec Chris Pratt. <laughs> if you told me this was Fat Chris Pratt's <coughs> grandfather, I'd be like, yup, no spitting facts. No doubt there. Rutherford B. Hayes. 
he looks <coughs> like he's he looks like he stinks. <laughs> yeah. He looks gross. He's also another Bruce Dern president. He looks like a uh, um Cliff Booth is waking him up to make sure that these hippies aren't um taking advantage of him. Well, he did keep the beard well trimmed, I am noticing. I think he needs a couple of points for that. The okay, Bob's yeah. big uh, boy flip on the top there probably could have done without that. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to number 20, James A. Garfield. His his name uh his name is actually James, comma, a Garfield because he was a Garfield. Uh and they called him that because he was actually, this is a true story, he actually traveled on a diplomatic mission to uh, to Italy. He was the first American to try lasagna. Uh -huh. And so we got the lasagna, he brought it back to America, and he said, hey, I'm president, uh, I'm the president, my name is James, a couple of things. Number one, I hate Mondays. Yeah. Number two, I have a cousin. His name is Nermal, and I have just signed an executive order to send him to Abu Dhabi. Third, I have found this thing. It's called lasagna. I love it. Watch me eat it. He just stuffed the whole thing in his mouth, and he said, I'm going to eat this every day. This is now the only thing I eat, and he got really fat, and he died. And that's why his name is James, comma, a Garfield, because he was a Garfield. Chester, let's move on to 21, and then we'll stop there. Maybe we can do this like a two... Maybe we can continue this next week. Would you like that, Bunny? We can do that. Because this is so much fun. But let's move on to 21. Uh, 21 is Chester A. Arthur. If you told me this was Sergeant Pepper, I would absolutely believe you. Ah, yes. yes. This is Sergeant freaking <clears throat> Pepper. He is fighting the Blue Meanies. I love this man. He looks like he stays in a bathtub. He is one of the Golga Frinchums. Is that is that it? No, the the people who are on the life raft who effed up. Anyway, this man lives in a bathtub. Hey, to one, me, to me. He looks like that guy who was in that movie. You know that guy, that one guy who was in that movie? He was also in that other movie. You know, he's been in a lot of movies, that guy. You know, uh, you know if no you saw his face, movie, you'd, rec if you, yeah. you'd recognize him if you saw his face. You yeah. Know. You would know. You would know who it was. This John has been Goodman so much was fun. like that for the longest time. Yeah. This has been so much fun. We taught people about 21 presidents, fun facts that they did not know. And this is going to, we're going to continue this in our next episode. We're going to start with number 22, Grover Cleveland. Um, he was our first Howard the Duck president. And we're going to try and continue on, see if we can finish next week. Because this has been so much fun, Bunny. Yes, it has. This was a blast. So that is it. For historic approximations this week, be sure and join us next week for more educationally uneducational fun as we continue our look at the history of American presidents. And cut on that.